Hey guys, Aaron here. Uh, I'm going to do a knife collection update because uh, my collection has changed a little bit over the last few months. Sold some things, bought some things. Pretty standard, you know, for a knife collector. Um, first things first, let me show you my fixed blades. Um, my oldest fixed blade was a gift from my buddy Brian, and it is, get in focus, a Gavco EDC. Uh, nicely used. I carried this uh, this knife in my truck. Um, used it to open packages and stuff, and just whatever else I needed. Um, Gavco makes a killer Kydex sheath, um, as you can tell. But uh, this thing has been in my truck uh, that I recently sold. That's why it is out of my truck. And um, I'm going to be putting it back in my new car. So Gavco EDC is one of my fixed blades. That's the oldest. Um, I got this fixed blade. I'm actually pulling it out of my pocket. At Blade Show this year. This is a Patrick Doyle. Doyle Knives Land Pirate. Um, really cool blade shape, bead blasted, um, CPM 154, uh, carved micarta with uh, kind of copper pins and red liners here. Um, really cool knife. Just a perfect like EDC fixed blade size. Um, just really excited about this blade. I have Rick from Dragon Cut Leather, Dragon Cut on the USN. He's going to make me a leather pocket sheet for this and that will be perfect. This is my least favorite way to carry a pocket fixed blade. So, um, looking forward to that, and then this thing is going to go into the regular EDC rotation. But that is my second fixed blade. I'm probably going to be buying a few more fixed fixed blades in the upcoming months. They just, they're kind of hitting me at a price point that's a little more comfortable now than the folders are. Um, next up is one that I'm really excited about. This is a John Graham Wee Razel. And this has... Um, Figured Desert Ironwood Handles and Mosaic Pins, and it's in um, 13C26 blade steel with the Boss Heat Treat, and this is the part that's really exciting. Prototype. So this is one of the very first ones he made. Red liners. And all in all, this is, I mean, this is an ideal EDC fixed blade. It will, um, you've got the true 90 degree razel tip there. Um, great grinds by John. Super thin edge geometry on this knife. It just is a absolute razor. And um, let me just um, get in some highlights here. And uh, just a fantastic piece. And his pocket sheath, this is my favorite way to carry um, an EDC pocket sheath. Right there. He makes them perfect. And uh, well I think he has them made but they are perfect. And I uh, I love them. So this is a great, a great fixed blade that I'm really excited to own. Um, I think, I think that's it. I have this little guy uh, that I don't even really know the maker for. I know he's on the USM, but I, I keep forgetting the maker. But this was a gift from New to Knives. Um, I've contemplated doing a giveaway with this knife, and I'm gonna, I'm trying to come up with just the right way to do it. But nice little, um, you know, EDC dashy. So. There's that. I think that'll do it for fixed blades. So let me kind of move these guys back where they go. And I'm going to start with a couple of production folders. This is the CRKT Eros on IKBS. Just a really neat little neat little knife. I don't buy a whole lot of productions, but this one, um, when I was reading about it, I just decided that I, I had to have. So first production run, Canadian design. Um, this is the stainless steel one. They make a titanium one. It's a little more expensive. But just a cool little EDC knife, once again. EDC knives are going to be the theme of my collection. That's kind of how it's trending. Nice and small. Great blade shape. Um, you know, overall pretty great. And then the other production folder that I have, that I have kept around, is this mini grip that I won on Instagram. This is a limited edition with CPM M4 blade steel. Um, this is kind of my ideal uh, griptilian. Um, M4, coated blade, uh, the split arrow clip, just perfect grip tillion, perfect mini grip. So, love that. Um, I have these, I've shown these before. These are my little French gentleman slip joints. I bought this one from a boutique, uh, these Leo, Le, Le Goulet, Leo, 
um, a boutique in Paris when I was there on my honeymoon. Really nicely detailed slip joint that I have actually carried and used. There are marks on the blade from it. Uh, so I bought that on my honeymoon, and my parents picked this one up for me um, when they were in France on a vacation. Um, this one's bigger. This is a big size slip joint with a, a forged finish on the blade, and it's got a, a, a corkscrew on it, which functions well. I've used that before as, as well. So I've got those guys. Um, I have a whole mess of like some cheap imperial um, slip joints and stuff like that that were my grandfather's that I inherited. Um, sorry, I'm digging around in my knife box here. But next up, um, the folding knives, the custom folders. Let me show you, first of all, to get this one out of the way, because you guys have seen it before, my Birch Tangent. Um, desert Ironwood handles, stainless Damascus, boomerang stainless Damascus, bolster, and blade. Um, this is a beast of a knife. I still carry it. I still love it. Um, it is a great collector piece, and I could not be happier with it. So, that's one. Um, let's see... Next up after that is my uh, Brad Blunt JBB Knives um, Arrester. This Brad's a buddy of mine. He made me this knife. I traded him a knife for this knife. And um, this is just a fantastic knife. Um, can't say enough good about it. Love the Moku tie clip on there. He just makes a killer knife. So... Um, I'm sure many of you are trying, but if you ever have the opportunity to put one of his knives in your pocket, do that and then never take it out. So, got that. Um, next up, let's see, let's do this one. My Tom Ferry Radical 194. Um, Tom makes a great knife. He does. I love the carbon fiber racing strips in here and the satinized um, tie in between them. It's really cool if you look at how he inlaid that. Um, the carbon fiber is actually laid into, integrally into the titanium of the handle. Um, and then he left the titanium between the carbon fiber strips satinized, which is crazy. Um, nice carbon fiber backspacer. And then my favorite pocket clip of all pocket knives, um, his carbon fiber clip. Um, LMAX blade, he's using the nitrogen steels now, N690 and such. Um... But this one is L Max at a very high Rockwell. I think he said it was like 63 or 64 Rockwell. But um, flips great. Uh, carries really um, slimly in the pocket. A lot of blade for the weight and the, the profile. So can't say enough good about Tom's knives either. Um, I have another one coming from him relatively soon that I'm pretty excited about. Uh, let's see. After that... The Tom Crine Alpha. Um, this is a really special knife. Marbled carbon fiber with orange peel titanium bolsters and orange peel titanium backspacer. Blue anodized liners and hardware. Bent tie clip. And Stellite 6K. So, um, if you don't know about Stellite, it is a cobalt alloy and it is corrosion proof holds an edge for a very long time it's it's non it's non ferrous it is not steel whatsoever um, but these knives in my opinion are one of the perfect or most perfect if you will EDC knives in the business toms they 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 fit the hand um, they offer just enough blade for your daily tasks they're smooth his IKBS is on the money i mean this thing fires like a flipper and that's, that's just been true across all of his knives that I've seen. All the alphas that have IKBS are just like absolutely like smooth as butter. So, love that one. Got that one direct from Tom not too long ago. Oh, uh, let's see. Next, this came from Blade Show this year. This is the Eddie Baca Slim Frame Lock. Just very uh, elegant, simple... Um, orange peeled titanium all over the place, bent tie clip, very functional, um, carbon fiber backspacer, nice orange peel, oversized pivot that doubles as the over travel stop, and then a hand rubbed uh, steel satin blade. Um, and you can see his maker's mark is like jewelers. Let me see if I can pick it up any better. 
like jewelers engraved on the blade, which I think is a really cool touch. Um, got to meet Eddie and have him personally deliver this knife at Blade Show, and um, got to handle his collaboration with Leong Ma. And I just, I gotta be honest, man, his stuff is great, and it's cheap for a custom knife. Cheap, cheap. Um, when I got home, I reached out to him and told him that I needed another before he closed his books. So if you guys are looking for a good introductory blade in the custom knife world, look up Eddie Baca and reach out to him, because I know he's thinking about closing them up. And, you know, this knife, base model price on this knife is like 375 You really, really, um, this is not base model, but base model would be 375 And this is more than $375 worth of custom knife. So, Eddie Baca, this is the slim frame lock. He does a couple other models that are really, really cool that you should check out. Next, Stephen Carroll. This is the CAMS, or the Crazy Ass Modified Sheep's Foot. Really nice size, small, smooth, got great, I uh, got a, just a great grind profile. Um, S35 VN blade, bent tie clip, nice milling detail on the handle, carbon fiber back spacer, um, frame lock, really smooth for just being on poly washers. Uh, these great, also a great knife. Um, I, I would put these guys kind of in the same category as fantastic craftsmen that are underappreciated. Both of these guys' knives are cheap and very well made. Um, I think Stephen just closed his books, but if he hasn't, I would reach out to him and see if you can get on. Because honestly, guys, he makes this one. He makes the EDMW, the Everyday Modified Warncliffe, and a couple other models. The the SES Fatty, which is thick blade stock, about this size. Um, he is a great knife maker, and you, you couldn't go wrong with one of his. Let's see. Next up, this guy. This is the Sebi um, Knivar, or Nivar, or however you want to pronounce it. Flipper. Um, I, don't, I don't know what about that guy's camera cut off, but he is Sebi Knivar on Instagram. Um, so check him out. Uh, Next up, um, something you guys have seen recently in my channel, but a Chris Reeves Manandi. This has uh, Cocobolo wood on either side, and um, Devin Thomas Raindrop Damascus. Kind of a cool thing about this is my, my dad went with me to Blade Show this year, and he is not a big knife guy, but he, he wanted to get an elegant gentleman's folder, something he said that he could carry for the rest of his life. And he wound up getting one of these as well. His had Bacote wood and just stainless steel blade. But we both bought them at the same time. And that was very exciting for me. Kind of introducing him to um, one of the finest makers in the knife world, Chris Reeve. So um, I have this one. And then kind of as a big brother to that, I have this guy. Which uh, was delivered the Monday before Blade Show. I placed an order for this knife at Blade Show last year. And this is a large left-handed Sebenza 21 um, with Gabon Ebony Inlay and Devin Thomas Raindrop Damascus, once again. Um, so these two are kind of like big brother, little brother uh, in my collection. Both have Raindrop Damascus, both CRK with wood inlay. Um, very happy with both of them. I was struggling for a while there with not owning a Chris Reeve knife because he really is the standard by which I measure these other customs. If a custom knife maker can't get to this quality at least, um, then I don't know. So, and next up, lastly, is my newest knife. And this is the Jake Hoback Quayback. And I'm going to do a separate video on this, but suffice to say, this was the first Quayback. This is the prototype um, that was carried by Jake himself for a little over a year to prove the design. You can see that it is pre-HRD system. This is not the mid-tech, but this is a full custom. It was the first one made. It was the only one made with a S125V blade. You can see it has use marks and scratches on it. It was used by Jake um, for, you know, heavy to prove the design, like I said. And then, and this blade steel really doesn't take any other finish than just a belt finish. Um, but this was offered to me by Jake. Uh, he really was uh, really cool about it. Sought me out at Blade Show and we discussed it. Um, really cool guy. Uh, Hoback was the first custom I ever owned. I had an A10. 
Um, and I've, I've owned several since, and Jake and I have been, become pretty good friends chatting back and forth. So it was a real honor for him to offer this to me, and it will be a huge honor to carry it and use it and just have kind of this part of Hoback history. So um, I guess that's it, guys. You know, stuff's changed. Stuff's come and gone. Um, you know, knives change hands. One knife goes to fund another. And, uh, you know, all in all, I'm really happy with... Um, what I have and what I, you know, what I've been able to score through Blade Show and from friends, and I have a couple more coming. Um, overall, my purchases are slowing down. I just uh, bought a new car, and the wife and I are working on the house and stuff like that. But I'm still in it. I still am enjoying it, and um, we'll kind of see what happens over the next uh, the next few months and the next year or so. But I'm really getting to a point where I like all of these a lot, and I'm not, I'm, I don't really have any desire to sell any of these to fund something different. So, um, hopefully this just grows and you don't see something go away for something else to come in. That's where I would like to be. But, that's it. I'm looking forward to your comments, and, um, that's all. Thanks a lot, guys. Aaron out of here.